bring in our good friend John Pease to talk football. Hopefully he's exhaled. Nobody was more nervous about the rivalry game than John Pease. Oh, BYU, BYU. What did I tell you, John? Play a clean football game and your two touchdowns better. Ended up being 18 points better and really more than that because they could have stuck that touchdown in at the end. Well, yeah, yeah. I uh you know, you know it's interesting just just uh, the whole the whole game. Obviously, the two turnovers for touchdowns were, you know, killers. It just it destroyed any chance they had. It was interesting in the in the third quarter, BYU kind of put a good run together and they took Zach Wilson out of the game to run a uh, Wildcat play <laughs> that lost about six or seven yards and killed any chance of that drive to being successful. And then it just kind of fell apart for him. And, and Utah, I think, obviously, you know, you found out what they were all about the last nine minutes. They just said, okay, it's been a nice day. We're not throwing the ball very well at all, so let's just pound it. Oh, it wasn't just the last nine minutes, John. It was the second half. Yeah, the second half. But, but the one that, that just, I mean, stood out was – I mean, where they demoralized BYU was that last drive. See, to me, I go the other way. I was talking about this with different people the other day. I think it's the opening drive of the second half where they march 11 plays, 75 yards, and 10 of the 11 plays are run plays. That, to me, was the one that set the tone. See, I think BYU was already demoralized with nine minutes and a second left. That, to me, was just the cherry on top. But I thought that that drive to open the second half where they come out of the locker room, they're leading 9-6, and they just put the flag in the ground and say, we're going to run it down your throat and there's nothing you can do about it. They only threw the ball once on that drive. Yeah, that's you know, that's I, I agree. That, 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 there's nothing worse defensively than having a team take the ball and just run it down your throat. And I think, I think it, it, you know, that that drive, those two drives were just, they were just throat cutters. They just, they just murdered them, and it, and it was a shame. And and I don't know at BYU, uh, they could given the ball to the tight end, who you know I think is very, Bushman can is going to be a real force at the next level I think and then they just I I don't know what their plan was in the second half well but they they didn't have one though John because they didn't have any other options Utah actually took the tight end away that that to me that's they they were able to get it in the first half and then they locked that tight end up with uh with uh Terrell Burgess in the second half in fact there should have been another interception Burgess should have had two picks the other night he had the one hit him in the hands but the other one he had just he had just slapped you know right up against him coverage on Bushman down the field and if Terrell turns his head a little it hit Terrell Burgess in the side uh I they just took the tight end away and there were no other options that's what we talked about last week they didn't have who were the guys on the outside they didn't have anybody yeah they didn't and they they tried and, and I know that people said well you know Tyson Hill ran the ball well in the first half but they took that away too and and Zach Wilson just didn't have anywhere to go with the football, and that's why he started taking chances and caught the, got those turnovers. Yeah, I, I think the lack of answers coming out of their, you know, the halftime uh, certainly didn't help them. And and the Utes just buckled down, and went to work, and uh, and that was it. And I think I think that's a good indication of what the Utes need to base their offense on. But that's just a, that's a, that's my opinion. Uh, I don't. I was not impressed with the throwing game at all. Whose? Utah's. Well, they, they, there was nothing down the field. They were dropping eight in coverage, and I mean, they were. They were. He had a ball drop that would have been a forty or fifty yard completion. He was thirteen well, of sixteen. And and Bill, if they don't, if they if they don't learn to get the ball down the field somehow, some way, every team that I mean, if I'm on a defense, I'm loving the box. I'm saying, okay, let's see if this quarterback can beat us deep. No, no, no. I, I agree with you there, but BYU didn't load the box. They had, they had a three-man front. And Utah just oh, kept I running know. against it. I know. I think there'll be shots down the field when teams don't drop eight, but when you drop eight down there, you'd be silly not to hand the ball off to Zach Moss. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's exactly true. Exactly. But, true. but he was accurate. I mean, he didn't make any bad decisions. He was 13 of 16, and two of those balls, one was tipped and one should have been caught because Keithy was standing all by himself 45 yards down the field. So I don't disagree with you. They're going to have to be more dynamic in the pass game at some point in time, but if you're, if you're only going to put three up at the line of scrimmage against Zach Moss, if you don't give Zach Moss the ball, you got to have your head examined. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I agree. Um, How do you think the lines played, offensive and defensive line? I, I think the offensive line, when they let them, when they, when they put the bit in their mouth and <laughs> let them go, I thought they were very impressive. Uh, uh, I, you would love to have more sacks, but I think I think BYU's plan was get the, if they were throwing it, we're going to get the ball out. Yeah, and uh, we're not going to let them disrupt us. So you know, yeah, I'm sure people are you know want, wanting to see four or five sacks in the game, but I, I think I think BYU's plan that way was pretty decent. I think they put a little bit of pressure on Zach to throw the ball and. He tried to stuff a couple up in, in there, and it cost him. You're going to play a Northern Illinois team this week, John, that beat a 1AA team by a couple of touchdowns at home on Saturday. Northern Illinois beat Illinois State, and that was, of course, a very close game a year ago. What's funny is, if you look at the numbers, Tyler Huntley damn near had a 300-yard passing game last year, which generally you think if a quarterback throws for 281 yards, you're going to have more than uh, – more points than you did, but they won't. You know, they only managed the uh, the uh, what was it? Uh, Ten points on offense last year it was that windy game up in right. up in DeKalb. But well, what do you make of the opponent this week in Northern Illinois? Well, the, just if you look at the, their history, they've they've been at the top of that conference not all the time, but they're always in it. So they got they they really it was funny. I was kind of laughing to myself when I was looking at them. Is they're a little bit like when I was coaching in uh, McBride was coaching at Long Beach State. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You know they've got they've got a bunch of um, probably what you say average football players, but they're they're going to find one or two guys that can hurt you, and uh, I guess their their running back could hurt. Uh, that's that's the word I heard out of there. Well, he had twenty. Well, their 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 leading rusher had twenty three carries for ninety nine yards. I don't know if he got win, win or if he got hurt. I haven't been able to get get kind of the note packet yet from uh, Northern Illinois, but their running back had twenty three for ninety nine the other day. So yeah, yeah, and uh, and and I also had heard that their their uh, one of their offensive tackles got hurt too. But I've i uh, most of that's just rumor of talking with people. But uh, they're they'll they'll be physical and they'll and they're they're not afraid. I mean, they play enough of these opponents yeah. that uh, they're not going to back off them. And and it'll be it'll be a street fight. The youths can't be happy or remember last week. They've got to go in there and say we've got to put these guys away. Uh, John Pease, our guest for a couple more minutes here on the Bill Riley Show. What would you make of the Oregon Auburn game Saturday night? Oh, I'm sick. I just I. I thought Oregon was a better team, and maybe that's a little Pac-12, you know, uh, bias. But boy, I thought I thought they really, really did a good job, and and just they just ran out of gas. It looked like at the end of the game, and Auburn was able to take control of the game at the very, very end, the last probably the last ten minutes of the game. Yeah, I I, I kind of saw, thought the same thing. Auburn gift wrapped it. I, frankly, I thought Oregon should have been up more than they were. John, the two interceptions early in the Kill game, them. the missed field goal, and, and and to me, Oregon didn't take advantage early, and they let Auburn, who's a good team. Let's not kid ourselves. Now that's a really good football yeah. team with just a young quarterback, but but they let them hang around a little bit too long, and, and you know, close games, teams are pretty evenly matched. And I thought those two teams were pretty evenly matched. You let somebody stick around. All it takes is one play, and Auburn made that play late. Yeah, yeah. The, the, you know, like you said, the interception and early in the early in the was was that the first second quarter? I forget where Oregon threw the interception in the end zone. Uh, well, Oregon had the interception or they had the ball go. I had the guy catch it, and then he dropped it. He okay, dropped the that, touchdown. That's what I'm thinking. He I'm dropped the me. touchdown. Yeah, yeah. Right. Auburn threw the two picks. Right. Uh, and you, you know, the the old motto about four and a score I guess if we get three turnovers and two scores we'll take <laughs> just as much uh most impressive thing you saw this weekend football wise was a player a team who was it mm. Mm-mm. Alabama second half yeah the light switch went on and it they, sure they became did. a different team against Duke yeah yeah they're 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 just so damn solid it's it's hard to it's hard to bet against them. Uh, you know the, the the defeat of Tennessee and Missouri, and I mean that there were some real. Well, you know, like we said going in, those first games are you know nobody knows. They're all 
you know, wild card games. Well, I will say this. I thought Oklahoma's quarterback and offense looked unbelievable for a week one. Yeah. Holy moly. Jalen Hurts looked fantastic in that offense. He threw it well. That that was always kind of the uh, kind of the mark on him. He was a great running quarterback, just so-so as a passer. I thought he was terrific the other day. And, you know, Oklahoma's defense actually looked like they might be able to get a stop or two, and that's really all they've been lacking the last couple of right. years. Right. I agree. They look very, very good, too. NFL opens this week. Who's your pick to win the Super Bowl, John? Rams. Rams? Rams over Kansas City. Shame Sorry. on you. <laughs> Shame on you. Okay, we'll see how that goes. Well, okay, although Kansas City is just awesome, in my opinion. Uh, well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. The, the, the AFC. I think the AFC overall is tougher than the NFC. The Rams. It, I wouldn't be upset if the Rams won it, just because my friend Eric Weddle's playing for the Rams, and right. I think it would be a great way for him. It would to, be fun for him to wind down his NFL career. Yeah. But I'm going to be rooting for my Chiefs. Yeah, what twelve years for Weddle? Is that right? Yeah, he's had a no. This is his thirteenth. Great, great career. Thirteenth year, great career for Eric and, and, and everything else. Be a better guy. Couldn't be a better guy. I, I always tell people, John, he is the exact same guy today that he was when he was an eighteen year old freshman at yep. Utah. Yep. Just got a little bit more money in his bank account, but he's the same great guy that he was back then. He's got a lot more money. <laughs> <laughs> he's almost got John P's kind of money. Oh yeah, yeah. Just, just <laughs> yeah. I get, I get. Fives, fives of dollars. Uh, you just had to work 40 years to get yours. He's, he's done it in 13. Yeah, well, that's what you get for being a good athlete and having a talent and a skill. No doubt about that. Um, so you like Utah's chances this week. What, yeah. What's the number one thing you want to see get markedly better this week from week one to week two? More, I, I want to see more. Well, kicking game was marginal to, at best. Huh. I think, that, yeah. Uh, I would like to see them just come out very seriously, pound the ball, control Northern Illinois, and uh, just, you know, the clean game you were talking about last week, uh -huh. you wanna, I, that's what I'd like to see. You know, maybe a 28-10 uh, game or something like that, that they just, where they, where they go out and control the game. They don't have to kill anybody, but just go out and control the game Move the ball well, get a couple first downs, even though you may not score every drive. You get two or three first downs. Your kicking game is solid. You don't only kick off, sit the ground, and roll around. Uh, but uh, I'm sure those things are all being addressed. Well, to be very honest, they're a 22 and a half point favorite at home. I'd like to see them win by more than 28 10. They won by that same margin down in Provo in the first game. I'd like to see a little bit bigger margin of victory. I'd like to see a clean game. And I'd like to see a little bit more hashtag throw game. I, yeah, I, I just, to yeah. me, I think Northern Illinois is a team that's going to try and load up and take Zach Moss away. Yeah, I because mean, they did a year ago. Zach only had sixty six yards last year. I, I'd like to see Tyler have a little bit bigger day and get some of those wide receivers involved. Exactly. I think that's exactly right, and I think that's coming off the first week. You know, that's that's just a continuation of what you'd like to see the program develop into. Yeah, because this is a good team. This is not a great team, but this right. is a team that's on par with a BYU. Yeah. They are, but yeah. you're at home and you're in the second week and because you're, you're going to be able to do whatever you want to do next week against Idaho state, no offense Bengals, but that's a mediocre one double a program right there. Right. This, this is your, this is your last big test, John, and I won't even say it's a big, this is your last test before you play USC in two weeks. So right. to me, I'd like to see them, you know, continue to build on what they did last week, but get maybe a little bit more throw game involved. Yeah. I, I, but I again, if they drop, the but, but if they drop eight, hey, give it to Zach Moss and let him run for 250 yards. That's you would love to see with Zach about 185 and Tyler about 240. Yeah, and, and you'd like to see Zach get it maybe in about two and a half quarters. And then let some of those other guys get some touches tough. in the late third and early fourth quarter, right? That would be wonderful. Put him back in the bubble wrap. But it's never what we expect it to be. No, we were saying the same thing a year ago, and the wind was blowing 50 miles an hour, and it took until Chase's pick six last year. So, Well, Dick Duran had a great saying. He says, what's supposed to happen, going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was Dick Duran? That was Richard Duran, yes, and I loved it. If if you get prepared and you're ready to go and you're paying attention, then you'll play your best, and and that's all we can ask for. Uh, John, great talk, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, talk to you, Bill. Thank Thanks. you, John. John Pease with us here on the Bill Riley Show. Dick Geron, by the way.